What's up guys, it's your favorite here, Stream Your Mind, and today we are going to see if it's possible to be Elden Ring using only our bootyful booty. The rules of the run are quite simple, I can only use the Ground Slam Ash of War or any other iteration of it. I can't use Spirit Ashes, but I can use summons to my liking as long as they are provided by the game. With that out of the way, let's begin. I picked Hero as the starting class because it has the most strength obviously, gave myself an appropriate name and I then made the hottest ass in town with the most iconic mustache you will ever see. Once I was finished creating the hottest man alive I woke up in a chapel of anticipation where I was ready to wreck my first boss. The fight was pretty close but after surrendering to my enemy in order to not humiliate him further I arrived in Limgrave in the Church of El where I had a lovely conversation with a knight and his angry horse. Speaking of horse, I needed to find mine, so I headed to another side of Grace where I was greeted by a hot chick that handed me the whistle for my trusty steed. After making it clear that it wouldn't work out between us, I left Mel and I in order to reach the third church of Marka, where I picked up the physics flask. But it still was unarmed, so I took a nice walk through the woods where I found the main ash of war for the run. I then stopped at the bank to pick up some cash, traveled to Weeping Peninsula to grab the Morning Star. I then took a teleport for Grail's Dragon Barrow, where I rejected Melina once more, won a tier 8 scratch card, grabbed my weapon of choice for the run, and slapped a drying dragon right in his butt to gain a lot of money. After I finished leveling up, I applied Grand Slam to my great sword, and I then took a trip to Lyurna of the Lakes to get the Raya Lucaria Crystal Cave to break crystals with my butt cheeks and get myself the Miner's Bell bearing number 1. I then needed to get to Altus Plateau, so I went ahead to get both pieces of the Dectus Medallion and took the elevator to my favorite area of the game. Here I went to the sealed tunnel for the Miner's Missing Stone Bell bearing number 2, whatever the fuck it's called, and after picking up some Smithing Stone 5 and 6's, I cheesed everybody's favorite pushover in order to gain some free runes. Erdtree Avatar was also an important piece of the puzzle since it drops the opaline bubble tier, so I went ahead and beat his ass with my ass. Once I finally got my weapon to plus 16, I was finally ready for Margit. I was so overpowered at this point that he went down first try without breaking a sweat. The only real problem I've encountered was that the Ash of War had a long entry animation and that would kind of show up to be problematic for some of the faster bosses as we will see later in the run. Anyway, before humiliating Godric inside his own castle, I decided that it was best to pick up the Claw Talisman as it increases damage from jump attacks, so a very useful item for this run. Okay Godric, time for your Monday spanking! Once the most disappointing son of all time was defeated, I headed straight to the academy to teach this dog a lesson. I said to teach this dog a lesson. Okay, there you go. Renala was next, and we all know Renala is kind of a pushover, and as expected, she went down first try without any issue at all, which is kind of weird considering the game that we're playing. The time for progressing Bar's quest had finally arrived, so I spoke to him and the two fingers, but before doing anything else, I had some unfinished business in Caleb to resolve. So I accidentally killed Shaquille O'Neal, which dropped a needle for me that I then gave to an old man to repair, and I then gave it to a girl who needed it to cure herself, and it weirdly worked. See? Vaccines are a farce after all. She then gave me a nice talisman for saving her and at that point I became the best stalker in history. After chatting casually at an old shack I founded her again in Altus Plateau. After which I went to the Shaded Castle and picked up an arm for her so that she could aid me in battle. 
She helped me fighting a foreskin apostle and then she told me she was going to fuck off somewhere else for some time. But none of this matters right now as I had some stuff to do as well so I stayed in Altus Plateau and invaded this poor guy which tasted the flavor of my butt right in his face. I then traveled back to Sivar, he gave me a tampon and I transformed it into a used tampon, gave it back to him and he thanked me by chopping off one of my fingers. Uh, I guess that's how it works here in the land between. He also gave me the pure blood knight medal and I think is now a good time for a montage to show you in a quick and efficient way what I did with it. After I was finished farming, I was feeling brave so I decided to take on Redan and this led to one of the most epic fights of the entire run, so I will leave it here for you to enjoy. Just remember to subscribe to the channel, trust me, I know if you won't, I have only 80 subs so it's easy to count them.
Once we're done, Phil, I spoke to Alexander the Jar and then I talked to him again in Mount Gelmir and I then proceeded to kill off an innocent lizard. Well, not really innocent, but definitely a lizard. Finally, I was ready to head to the capital outskirts where I killed off the draconic tree sentinel with ease. But before entering the capital, I paid a visit to the Falling Star Beast to gain myself some smithing stone sixes. I now had a plus 19 weapon. Back in Lyndale, a weird song started to play and all I could do was do a short montage of all the things I've done there. Unfortunately, they didn't sell any I survived my first day in the city t-shirts, but oh well. The fight I was really worried about was Morga, as he is really fast and has multiple combos that can just obliterate your vigor, but surprisingly enough it was one of the best fights I had with him in general, so I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. <laughs> Moving on to the mountaintops, I spoke to Millicent once more and... Oh, fire giant. I summoned Alexander for this fight because I really didn't feel like chasing the giant for a half an hour down the fucking arena, so call me a casual in the comments, go on. I decided that it was a good time for some farming, so after putting some levels into vigor and endurance, I leveled up my weapon and I went to the subterranean shunning grounds for some goodies. I grabbed some smithing stone sevens, upgraded my weapon again, and finally said yes to Melina. Faramazula is next, and there isn't much to say about it. It's Faramazula.
After I upgraded to plus 25 and died many, many times to Malekith and his bullshit speed, I thought it was good time for Commander Neo. This was an excruciatingly long fight, but here it is, I sped it up for you so you can actually enjoy it. <laughs> So at this point, I was finally able to get to the Halic Tree so I could finish Millicent's quest. Naturally, I ran past everything, killed Loretta, entered Elfel, talked with my favorite Ryan babe in the world, defeated a stinky tree spirit, helped Millicent committing fratricide, and I finally obtained the Ryan Winged Sword Insignia. Oh, spoiler alert, Millicent dies. Back in Fire Missoula, it was Alexander's turn to go down. I'm sure he's going to be a mighty warrior. Oh, well, sorry, bud. Finally, the Shard of Alexander was mine. I gave Malekith a shot, but it was clear as the blue sky that I wouldn't be able to beat him at this point, so I went back to the subterranean shunning grounds where I got lost in the sewer sewers. finally found the entrance for the other Mog boss fight, and wouldn't you know it, I got him first try. Too easy. I then paid a visit to the Three Fingers and... Now that I relieved all the stress, I came back to Malekith for revenge.
was now time finally for the capital of ass. Uh, I mean capital of ash. How bad could it be? Yeah, really bad. <laughs> Oftener was fine, just a little bit tricky, but Godfrey. Oh, Godfrey on the other hand, not so much. At this point, I figure it was time to progress Ronnie's quest in order to get to the Siofra Aqueduct where I had to find everybody's favorite duo and this allowed me to reach the deep root depths. I then went back to Ronnie and she gave me the Carrion inverted statue and after a heated argument with your mother, I reached the top of the tower to pluck up the cursed mark of death. Back in Deep Proof Deaths, I saluted the Sim Squad and I then searched for comfort in Fia's big and soft arms. Uh, I was gonna say arms, but she had different plans. So I went solo for the evening and first tried the best dragon fight of the game. After this amazing fight, I also first tried Astel, completed Rani's quest, and my streak of wins would soon come to an end with actual real Mog, which is by far my favorite boss of the run, and maybe of the game in general. Ah, who am I kidding, Radagon is the best. But before all of that though, I went to the second Church of America to get the Purifying Crystal Tear, which negates Mog's most bullshit attack. You know the one. So I was now ready to face the Lord of Blood.
I summoned Shabriri to kill Godfrey because I couldn't for the life of me get the timings right and the run was getting long so I played the filthy casual card on this one. Radagon and Elden Beast though on the other hand were a treat and I really enjoyed fighting them this time around so enjoy the last fight of the run.
Thanks a lot for watching guys as usual, it's been a pleasure, I would love it if you could like, comment and subscribe as I try to put as much effort as possible into making these videos. I have more stuff coming up so make sure to click on that bell and I will see you in the next video.